Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson, and I'm the CEO of Miami's Action Coach Business Coaching Firm, Team Sage, and your host for the Business Spotlight South Florida, where we focus on the businesses that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Michael Hall, co-founder of Medium 4. Welcome, Michael. Can you tell us a little bit about your business? Sure. So uh, Medium 4 is a full-service marketing agency. Uh, more so, we call ourselves a boutique marketing agency because we primarily focus on ideation and brand development. So we do a lot with building brands and building companies, I would say, from the ground up. Um, that was our focus. That's how our company started. But natu naturally, things progressed. Uh, recently, we become certified as an 8A certified. Uh, oh, certified. Yeah. That's a very big deal, Michael. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's, it's great when you talk to business people about it because they know how much it takes. To oh, do it. my God. I have somebody <laughs> working on it. It's like the tail end of it now. It's been probably over two years. It's yes. crazy. So we were it's well done. We got lucky. Uh, we actually got ours done in um, nine months because we oh. just got a lot of stuff. And we've done a lot of stuff with the government in different cities. So now that we're 8A certified, um, we've done a lot in the community. We did a lot with advocacy, building small businesses. But as a small business owner, you have to start considering the opportunities for retirement. <laughs> with 8A initial contracts, some of those contracts and grants can almost serve like an annuity because once yeah. you get them, you can keep getting them. And then if you sell your business or somebody buys your business, that's an asset that they're buying into. It's an asset to the business. Yes. So we're strategically redoing everything. And now we're focusing on um, 8A grant. How long have you had it? We just got it Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, it, it hasn't been long. We, that's a really good And I'm looking at the calendar well, to like make the sure. The whole world is opening up for you guys, right? Yeah. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a time. Uh, it's been a time and it's, it's been an adventure because we were doing a lot in technology and a lot with smaller businesses. But, you know, you go from $2,500 to $5,000 clients to a $3.875 million budget. And the only thing you realize is your quality of work hasn't changed. Your client has changed. So you already performing at that level. We just had to find someone to match the level we were performing at. And um, it comes all thanks to my business partner, Dante. He did a lot of the work. Um, I had some very dramatic life changing things happen to me last year, um, which I have overcome, but it was some big stuff. Uh, my mother's health and everything. But while I'm here and only because I have the opportunity, I have to thank my father. My father has been doing government procurement and working with a government as a civilian ever since I was three years old. Really? Uh, yeah, he had me when he was uh, 17, going on 18 years old, and he was a civil engineer. And he, he used to take me around these things, and it's things you pick up on that you don't realize how much they've impacted your life. So a lot wow. of these thanks to my father. Wow. Now, did you say you lost your mom last year? No, no. My mother was recovering. So my oh, mother okay. had, uh, neck throat cancer oh boy throat cancer so she uh she's uh, cancer free now so we beat it <laughs> so thank you god yeah, yeah so she's overcoming cancer but it was just it was a lot that's my best friend oh it's a lot <laughs> yeah, it was a lot to deal yeah. with i totally understand so how long have you been in business and how many people are on your team so I've been in business since I was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> How long has Medium 4 been in business? <laughs> uh, medium 4 has been in business uh, for 16 going on 17 years. Oh, same as me. Yeah, 16 going on. So we started in 2006, uh, actually June 6, 2006. So 06, 06, 06. Oh, wow. Yeah. Take it for and I thought your number was four. Because I it was is. looking at your website and I said, you know what? I wonder how they came up with this name. Because you have ideation, design, cinematic dreams, marketing, energy. That's four. Mm -hmm. Then you have the, then the idea, create, develop, and the results. That's also four. Then you have consulting, graphic design, web development, then marketing agencies, cinematic dreams, and videography, which is also four. And I was like, this guy is like, resonates with the number four. <laughs> so four comes from game time. Game time oh. is life. If you think about a game, most games have four quarters. Okay. Business, you do business in quarters. Uh, life is in seasons, four seasons in a year. So we kind of focus on that. And it was always uh, medium four was we only wanted to focus on four mediums at a time because things would shift and things would 
you know, you shift with the industry. You might be doing tech, you might be doing innovation, you might be doing, you know, software development. So I always felt if you go outside of four, you'll lose that element of perfection. Mm. You won't really be able to conquer anything. And so we work in seasons, we work in time frames. I even work in four hour windows. I do phone calls and meetings between eight and 12. I take a one hour break. I do my creative design from two to six. I just, I like to keep things that are more structured. So that's where it came from. And we also didn't want to have, I mean, to be honest, we wanted a name that only represented what we, our work, but we didn't want a name that was going to be gender biased or racially motivated. So we didn't want somebody to see our company name and be like, oh, that's a small black owned business. We just wanted to be known as a great marketing agency, no matter what. Um, now, in theory, it's not four of us, but both of us probably have two different personalities. So it's only two <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a I'm a Gemini Taurus, so I actually have. Oh my God, a Gemini! I was like, oh geez. So it's, I'm I'm all three of us, and then it's my business partner. So. <laughs> There's your four people right there, but um, oh, funny. it's just two of us. We uh, my one of my closest friends named Brandon Phillips. Uh, congratulations to Brandon. Brandon just recently sold his HR company called Global HR Research. Uh, second time selling it, but he's doing great. And I remember his web developers because we helped him do design and his brand. And he was like, Mike, you, you and Dante remind me of these guys. I was like, Brandon, what are you talking about? So he's like, two guys, they do my website. They do web development. Him and the business partner, they meet like every Friday, every other Friday. And they're making like $300,000 a piece and they work from home. Now this was 16, 17 years ago. So money meant a lot different you know, yeah, yep. different thing back then. So that's probably about 400,000 a piece if they were still making that same amount of money. And I just remember telling Dante, that's going to be our life. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, we're going to work from home. We're going to have our families. We'll go drink whiskey and have lunch every two weeks. And we're going to make at least $350,000 a year. And that was pretty much what we aimed to do. So we don't really outsource a lot. Almost everything you see on our site, the editing, the videography work, the wow. little bit of coding we do, the website development, all the design. I'm an illustrator. That's my art that you see behind me. And mm -hmm. um, we do everything in house. So I think we might have, out of a close to a half a million dollar year this year, we might have outsourced twelve hundred dollars. Wow! So we do all the work ourselves. Well, Michael, your company is about to just go like to the stratosphere with your eight A. You know, okay. so. Um, that might change. You might have to bring on some team members, even if they're remote. Possibly. We might do a lot more consulting. Mm -hmm. um, and through the consulting, it might be better that way. So it might stay the same. But if we do, we'll still keep the company structure the same. It'll just be us. Mm -hmm. And we'll just have contractors and we'll do subcontracting. It's really cool. Thank you very really much. Really cool. All right. So I, um, I read this on your site. And, and it sounded like a mission statement or a vision statement. So it says to be the largest minority owned consulting agency in the Southeast region of the United States. And you would do that. And I thought this was very interesting. Trust, comma, forward, comma, thinking. Not forward thinking. It's forward, comma, thinking. All right. So can you tell me what, tell me about those two pieces? Um, the biggest thing was bringing other people together. A lot of people don't believe in collaboration. So one of our primary programs we had developed when we were smaller and we shouldn't even been doing it. So it was just the way I like to think about things. We used to have medium four word and um, it was F-O-U-R-W-O-R-D instead of F-O-R-E. And we would come up with these little four word sayings, but it was also paying it forward. So a lot of companies, we would actually design and develop, you know, brands from because we knew what the brands were worth. Um, you know, you're developing a brand for somebody that can be a $10,000, $20,000 investment because of what it's doing for the value of the company. And so we would do the design work and knowing these clients couldn't pay us, we would take small equities of the company. Now, in hindsight, um, I wouldn't have done it that way. I should have just taken revenue shares uh, because equity doesn't mean anything unless the company sells. Exactly. But, uh, for the aspect of it, we would ju we just want to always be forward thinking, and that was just the way we were trying to position ourselves. 
And largest didn't have to be the largest in money value or in size. We just want to make some of the largest impact. The impact, yeah. And we've worked with about, in South Southeast Florida, we've worked with, South, yeah, Southeast Florida, we've worked with probably 15 to 16 cities in each county. And really? We start, yeah, when you look at the impact with the counties and the things we've done with the cities and those developments, um, it's been a lot bigger. That's just really cool. Um, I'm impressed. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, and this is the city going crazy asking me more. <laughs> Tell them we need a few more minutes. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Simon Sinek says, people don't care what you do or how you do it. They care why you do it. So Michael, why do you do what you do? I'm an artist. It's a way for me to create. Um, it's a way for me to create, and it's a way for me to give back. Uh, I also don't want to die with all these crazy ideas in my head. And you can only run so many businesses. You can only have so many ideas. So due to the fact that I don't have children, um, won't have children, I think this is my way of leaving, leaving a legacy. Uh, there will always be at some point somebody will see some logo or some website or some marketing idea that I came up with. And if it made the world just a little bit of a better place for a couple of minutes, that was my job. Mm. Beautiful. All right. So tell us who, describe your ideal client. Who's your ideal client? The government. Anybody. <laughs> yeah, now you have any day, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we are a very independent company. Um, and so that would be the goal. So would you uh, move away from the small businesses that you've worked for or the cities that you've worked for in the past? Some of them, we would try to keep them on board, but some of them just, the capacity is not worth it. To be honest, it's hard to do something for someone for twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and then turn around and do the same thing for five thousand um, dollars. There's only so much charity you can do before you have to work for yourself. You know, there's there's still a mortgage to pay. There's still health insurance. You know, as an independent, as a small business owner, you know, health insurance ranges at around four hundred to five hundred dollars um, at least. And I have a horrible hobby. I love sports cars. Uh, so <laughs> I have to be mindful about, I don't want to have to work for the rest of my life. And, you know, we don't have a product that we sell. So I don't have something I can just put on the shelf and it sells out. Uh, mm -hmm. It comes from here. It comes from everything right. here to our fingers for what we can create. So I have to really focus on how much we can create and what we can put on the table. So you kind of in the grab while you can. I have to create as much as I can and get all the expertise that I can get. So that amongst having that expertise, I am then in a position to turn everything around and be paid for that expertise. So my best case scenario, I don't have to create no more. I just consult from experience. But if I truly had to describe my ideal client um, outside of the, the truth of the matter, would it be in a, the government itself? It would probably be a small business starting from the ground up with, I don't even want to say an unlimited budget, but I would say unlimited trust. Uh, unlimited trust, being willing to push the boundaries and not feel they have to follow trends that have been set. Mm. That would be my client, someone that wants to be artistic, someone that would want to explore block and color theory, someone that would just want to do something where people would say, I've never seen something like that before, but I liked it. Do you guys just focus on the, on the videos mostly now or do you doing websites still? We still do website and brand development but we do a lot that's built around um, more so consulting and business development. So we don't design as much, but when we do, it's, it's pretty much in very impact, like city seals, it's historic things at this point. So it's, it's really mm -hmm. exciting. And then you were saying that the, um, that the, the, the kind of the businesses that you want to work with They've got to be willing to push the envelope or to be at least innovative and trust you in that sense. Correct. Yeah. So if we, a lot of the stuff, you know, in all honesty, we can pull things from templates. We can pull basic brands and we can change the colors and the clients love it. But that removes what we discussed. That removes the why I want to do it in the first place. Right. Uh, I'm an illustrator. So, but I can't do an illustration. I can't do a hand-drawn logo for $250 just because you can get it at that price on Fiverr. Right. Uh, 
that's that's an investment. You're buying a piece of art. Well, that's your time you and it's it. your and your expertise, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, you have to have somebody to say, okay, I'm willing to pay twenty or fifty thousand dollars because he's going to go through multiple renditions, and when we finish this logo, that piece of paper where that original logo started can be framed, just like the Nike swoosh that was drawn back in the day. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have a client that sees the value in that versus oh, let's do a simple logo and it's just a whole bunch of angles and circles and we're just following mm-hmm. the trends. If it goes down that path, it just doesn't work out. Yeah. All right, so they say every challenge is an opportunity. What opportunities arose in your business during the pandemic? Hmm. I wouldn't say it was as much of the pandemic versus just the impact of a lot of the social injustices and the things that were going on there. Because we had already went We had actually already went remote way before that. We were working remote for years. Mm -hmm. um, Besides working remote, you know, we were doing a lot of different things as far as in the community. And actually during the pandemic, we made more money. That was one of our best money years because a lot of people realized how much they needed. So there was it. There was was an opportunity for you. Right. So uh, once we went through all that, we did great. So I think just the mental wellness of others, because we did a thing called growth therapy with our other organization, Digital Grass. So we did a lot of stuff for the community. It's kind of, we have an empathy-based company. We, it's hard to ignore the social trends and the things that are going on. So we take on a lot of impact of what others go through because we have clients. We're not just designing and putting stuff out to be pretty. We have to listen to our clients. We have to understand the pain they're going through. So you take in all that energy so I would say the worst thing was just the sadness and the depression some of our clients were going through. Like, can you please do this? I can't afford this because I have to wager this. Um, you're just going through a lot of emotional negotiations when you're trying to just be a business person at the same time. You can't yeah. can't be that astute, hard business person when you know someone just someone just died unexpectedly. Yep. Yeah, we had a lot of community uh, work that we did in the pandemic and helping people with the PPP and the IDL and all those different kinds of things and how to pivot. So thank you, you know, for, for doing that and being willing to do that for people when they needed it most. With all the talk, Michael, about recruitment, retention, employee engagement, none of those things are really mattering to you. But what about inflation and economic uncertainty? Now that you have the A-Day, is it kind of like you don't really have those concerns? I don't know. I guess I've always looked at the potential of adjustment, but I don't want to say I don't understand economics. People are going to spend what they want to spend, and you just have to adjust to know where people are going to spend. People can't stop marketing. People can't stop advertising. We may lose a client. It just means we have to search and go get a new one. Um, but yes, with the certification and just government in general, a lot of our clients have budgets that are built five to 10 years in advance. Yeah. It's about us just competing and winning the contracts. So I, the uncertainty is there, but we live a simple lifestyle. The number we have as our goal to make as a company is an unrealistic number, you know, but it's also, if we don't make it, I know that we can live off of $55,000 a piece, you know, we, <laughs> we have a certain kind of lifestyle. I think a lot of people's uncertainty comes from living beyond their means or operating beyond their means. You don't, you don't go buy $20,000 worth of computers if you're only making $50,000 in client sales. You right. know? So I just think some people don't have the understanding of budget and how to operate a business at its most optimal level. Well, it sounds like you do. <laughs> I try. <laughs> All right, I have two more questions because I know what's ahead for your business in the next few years, right? Um, what has been your most significant learning since you started your business medium for? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, patience. I, I don't care what anybody thinks. My, I am doing brand psychology. I am, uh, I am an agency that's still running psychology. I have to speak to people. And when someone says, make it pop, or can you make it better? I have to try to understand what they mean or what they're saying. Um, and then also you may see something 30 steps ahead, but they still need you to change this color to blue and put a gold sprinkle on it just to see that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So that patience had to also transfer over to billing. I had to understand I could be patient, but if I can't bill for that patience, it's okay to just say no. Mm-hmm. Um, so patience was the biggest thing. I love what you said about just saying no. So I had a client who told me the most valuable thing I ever taught him was how to say no and to who and why. 
right? And you get those smaller clients like, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? I can. I can absolutely do it. But can you pay for it? Yeah. And, let them and even the if you're getting somebody who's, you know, can pay for it, but they're just what we would call a degrade client. You know, they're just going to be really a pain to work with and question everything. And that first piece that you talked about of the trust is critical. If we don't have trust, you know, then it's all painful. And it's also patience within myself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have to be able to look at myself and say, hey, you got to go through this or, hey, you know, you know what you're doing. So just calm down and let them talk. Um, probably the value within almost any man in the world is just knowing when to shut up. Sometimes it's best to just shut up and listen and let someone else talk through the whole process. Awesome. So as we wrap up the interview, Michael, is there anything else, any parting thoughts that you'd like to share? Um, I would say we need more people like you. We need no. more people that have the intuition to understand exposure means everything. Um, and just being able to talk because that's, that's probably the one negative thing about being a small business and us going remote is so many people work from home. So we don't have those same bouncing or as we would say back in the day, you know, throwing a spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. You don't have those sessions of just pushing the edge. It's, it's become so much more. We used to already be A to B in South Florida where we leave home, go to work and we come home. So it's not like Philly in New York where you have the transit and the happy hours and stuff like that. So we don't have those natural running right. with each other. And so I think by missing those natural run-ins, we've missed so many different opportunities. But now if we can present that back, it comes from this because somebody might see this and be like, oh my, I love the way he thinks. I might want to hire him. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different exposure, but we, I, we don't have that opportunity to have the whiskey, to have the drinks, to have the run-ins. And technology has done so good for us, but it's also done so much bad from just that human connection that we're missing. Well, thank you. I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed this interview thank with you, so you Michael. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for you know, what you're doing for your clients and for our community. I and I would say we need more people like you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. So thank you. And if you want to know more about Medium 4, you can go to their website, www.medium4four.com. And this is Spotlight South Florida, where we're interviewing businesses that make South Florida great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.